all new Mica MB42X Gen 2. It's a little speaker. It has a four inch carbon fiber woofer. Yep, that's right. 0. 0.75 inch silk dome tweeter. And the X means it has a crossover. I had the previous generation in a oh, long time ago. I think that was one of the first speakers that I ever reviewed on this channel. So I was delighted when Micah reached out to me and asked me to give this one a listen. But can a $99 speaker actually be good? Especially when the Sonus Faber Lumina 2 Amateurs have been my desktop speaker of choice. Now they're not actually on my desk, they're just to the right and to the left of my desk on homemade speaker stands, which I did a terrible job on. They're not very stable. This is how big it is compared to a Rubik's Cube. This is how big compared to a screaming goat button. And this is how big it is compared to a Mandalorian mask. The Mica MB42X for crossover generation two has a claimed low frequency roll off of 55. That can't be right. However, that's at negative 12 dB. We're gonna get to bass later though, so don't despair. As an impedance of four to eight ohms, count on four ohms because generally little speakers like this that make, mm, we're not gonna spoil it, no spoilers. They have a tendency to have fairly low sensitivity, but it's okay because I had these hooked up to the Lox G A40, which I just did the in-depth, well, I just did the video on the A40. I will link it right up here if you wanna watch that video. It's pretty good. Has a sensitivity of 86 dB. Wouldn't worry about that though, because chances are you're listening to these pretty close up. Like this, just kidding. Maybe farther away. And they are a diminutive, diminutive. They're small, nine and a half inches high, 5.8 inches wide, 6.5 inches deep. I don't think it takes a rocket scientist to figure out these probably go on a desk. So what else is it good for? You can use them in the kitchen. You can use them on the back porch. You can even use them in the bathroom. So the other speaker that we should talk about is the Mica RB42 because that was a bit of a reviewer's darling. Now, I didn't love it. What? Why? Because it was too neutral. I didn't feel like it had in near field listening enough oomph on the bottom. People love that speaker and I can tell why. It's a great neutral speaker, super small size, super great enclosure, feels like a cinder block. I get it. I get it. I always kind of like the fun factor from the original MB42X. Those speakers, however, sounded very different. King Nothing by Metallica. All right, that song has a pretty cool intro. At the 22 second mark, the bass line comes in. And it is thick and creamy and caramelly, and you'll probably need to take a cholesterol pill afterwards. A statin. That can't be right. The first thing that jumped off the page for me with this speaker was the amount of bottom end. And I'm not talking about bottom end extension. I'm talking about thickness around the 125 hertz region, around the 250 hertz region. It's really boosted on the bass. And it's good, but it also causes a little bit of issue in the mid range. The mid range is still there, but there's a bit of a veil. And one interesting thing I learned about using EQs way back in the 80s, is that if you want to accentuate a certain frequency, you don't always need to boost that frequency. Frankly, it's better to 
reduce the frequencies right in front of it. And when I reduce 250 hertz, about 2 dB, 1.8, 125 hertz, 125 hertz, down about a dB, guess what happened? All of that mid-range clarity came back in. So this speaker was voiced this way. I actually emailed them and they're like, yeah, you got a good ear. I said, thank you. But yes, they agree that it's boosted around the lower mid-range and upper bass area, which is good if you don't have a subwoofer. Tiny Dancer by Elton John. Mm, love Elton John. Around the one minute 40 mark, his voice kind of goes up. Now his voice is a little bit higher in the mid range. So it's not really being affected by that bump in bass. However, if you have male vocals, Johnny Cash, very baritone vocals, you are going to hear a lot of bloom down there. Now you don't need an EQ necessarily to kind of, I wouldn't say fix this, but to pull in more mid range clarity just go to the bass tone controls. Bump it down one or two. And if you have the Lox GA40, that's no problem. Or if you're running a Weem streamer on the front end, you can EQ till the cows come home. We used to have cattle get out all the time. Back then, lived in Nebraska. All the farmers knew each other, right? So we'd just get a call like at 1 a.m. We had the landlines. And the ring on the telephone was kind of like at a firehouse when there was a fire. That's what it sounded like. Anyway, my old man would stagger to the kitchen because we had one phone. One of his farmer's buddies would be like, your cows are out. Cows are out. So then I got woken up and we got to go out and herd the cows back into their enclosure. Fun times. Mid-range here, if things are in the upper mid-range, it's great, not bailed at all. Lower mid-range, things are gonna be affected by that 250 hertz. Boom, let's talk about treble. Harvester of Sorrow. Great track for treble because there's so many cymbal crashes. <laughs> crashes. So at the 10 second mark, there's a pretty big cymbal crash. And this is where the speaker has some limitations. Now, don't get me wrong, because we have to consider its price point here at $99. The symbols in some treble stuff action going on in the treble just breaks down a little bit. It doesn't have very good decay and seems a little bit unnatural. Doesn't happen all the time but you will hear it if you get this speak. Well, maybe you wouldn't until I mentioned it, but anyway, it doesn't have a perfect tweeter, okay? And we should expect that $99 speaker. The other thing this speaker does really well, but to be fair, all small bookshelves generally do this well, is soundstage and image. This was throwing things all around my office, which was great, but you can get those out into the room a little bit and get yourself a little bit into the speakers. Put stuff everywhere. And make sure you watch till the end because not only are you gonna get my opinion, but the Rocktopus is gonna give you its opinion on the mica. RB42X Gen 2. The year 1986. This movie was directed by John Carpenter, starring an actor who had starred in many of John Carpenter's films before. Also starring Kim Cattrall. Put it in the comments. Great movie, fun, fun movie. This speaker is not perfect. However, I actually like it better than the Mica RB42, which everybody does backflips over. It's not nearly as refined as the RB42, but I think it's more fun. And if you're buying a $99 speaker, you're probably just getting into this hobby and you wanna have fun. You don't graduate to a neutral speaker until you've, you're a hardened, resentful, cynical audiophile. That's when you want a neutral speaker. Just kidding. Anyway, they have a big boost around 125 hertz. You can mitigate that with EQ or with tone controls. Brings up that lower mid-range clarity. Everything is great. Little bit of issues on the top end with tweeters with really snappy initial attacks, especially on percussion just a little bit of a breakdown. I also heard it in Elton John's voice when he would go up. There'd just be kind of a 
hiccup up there every now and again. But at $99, this is a ton of fun. This would be a great garage speaker. This would be a great speaker for your kids. So it'd be a great surround speaker too, especially if you have a smaller room and you don't have a subwoofer that's taken over everything. That's really where these shine. You're not gonna get the low end extension, but you're gonna feel like you're getting the bass out of a much bigger speaker. The obvious comparison to me would be the Yamo S801s, which used to be able to be had in that home theater package for something stupid, like 150 bucks. They're about $99 if you buy them separately. And the Mica RB42X G2, way better. They also sound very similar because the SO1's got a big bump on the bottom too. Problem with the SO1 is even when you bring down that bump, you don't bring up the mid-range clarity. So I would choose the Micas over that. If the Sonys are on sale for $123, I would probably choose them over the Mica. Well, I would choose them over the Mica. They're much bigger though. So if you want a small speaker, Mica's probably the way to go. The other great thing about these speakers, they pair well with cheap Class D amps from China. Because the amps that are pretty thin and analytical throughout the mid-range, actually perfect for this speaker. But if you're gonna get one, probably get one with tone control so that you can tweak it just a little bit more. I'm pleasantly surprised. I didn't expect this speaker to be perfect at all. But even just leaving these speakers as is with their stock sound signature and not expecting them to be perfect and just kind of enjoying their sound signature, they were fun. A lot of fun. Very warm speaker unless you bring down that bass a little bit because it just covers up the mid-range. But you still have a little bit of pop and sizzle on top. If you're a bass head and don't have the budget for a subwoofer, these are great. You could add the Lox G840, you're in for a whopping $355, but you don't need to add that. You can get a Fozzy Audio TB10D for 60 bucks, and then a SMSL SE1 DAC. Hook it up to your computer. What is 60 plus 80 is 130. So for 230 bucks, you could have a decent, very decent, fun sounding system. Roctopus, what do you think? Well. I can only hear sounds between 600 hertz and 1000 hertz, so this was very good. I also like to fold myself up into a little column and climb into the port and eat a delicious starfish or small crab. There you have it folks, Roctopus hath spoken. So if you want to support the channel or you like what we're doing over here, give us a thumbs up and subscribe. You can also buy me a cup of coffee down at the bottom of the video. There's a thanks button. Click on it, buy me a cup of coffee, but don't feel compelled to buy me anything. This speaker will be linked to Amazon, and that is an affiliate link, which means if you click and you buy, I get a whopping huge commission. Amazon backs the money truck up and dumps a whole bunch of stuff in my driveway, a whole bunch of cash. Just kidding. Anyway, uh, don't binge watch anything on Netflix or Hulu. Binge, listen, maybe through your new Mica MB42, I always get them mixed up, MB42X Gen 2, and fill your soul with happiness. And with that, I'm Randy. I'm the cheap audio man.